Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here on this beautiful day in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, I'm here to announce that um, an already good deal um, has gotten better through the hard work of a lot of people just over the past few days. And I want to announce three very significant changes or additions to the Q deal that I think are very significant to all residents of the city of Cleveland, this, this, uh, this county, and every member of the community. Those are this. The Cavaliers have guaranteed that for every dollar of admission tax that goes to debt financing of the Q restoration project, a dollar will go to the city's general fund. The city will never get less than the debt service for the Q transformation fund, and I have a letter to that extent, and we're going to be introducing legislation tonight accepting that gift. Second, the Cavaliers have agreed to restore every surface of every basketball court in the Cleveland Recreation Centers throughout the city. And again, that will be part of the legislation that's introduced tonight. The third significant component is something that the speakers behind me are going to talk more about. But the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to partner with Habitat for Humanity and they're going to use the proceeds from the watch parties to work with Habitat for Humanity to restore 100 homes in three years in our community. And let me just speak to, to these items. Frequently at Cleveland City Council, we approve a lot of projects, we approve, approve a lot of involvement. Normally, what we get back is a guarantee of keeping or retaining jobs. We've never had anybody guarantee income back to the general fund. This is all on top of the approximately $2 million in income taxes, the parking taxes, the hotel bed taxes. But that guarantee that any public dollars spent on debt financing for the Q transformation project, the Cavaliers will guarantee our general fund gets at least that same dollar. It will be, it will, and you just don't get guarantees like this. So I'm very grateful that we were able to uh, come up with this agreement. And again, the, the, we, I've spoken with our depart, our, um, the director of Parks and Recreation. We are looking forward to getting those basketball courts restored and the folks from Habitat from Humanity will uh, be telling us about the, the partnership as well. Um, I also want to mention that um, Harriet Applegate, uh, the secretary of the Cleveland AFL-CIO has polled their residents and a strong majority, excuse me, their members, and a strong majority support this project. Um, finally, Congresswoman Marcia Fudge supports moving forward on this project, and she's put a statement out. I'm just going to read a few pertinent parts to you. The facts about the Q mean for all Cleveland residents are, are irrefutable. The Q means jobs, growth, tax revenue, and so much more, she said. The building is a tremendous economic asset. The challenges facing Cleveland would be more substantial if it wasn't for the economic benefits generated by the Q. The public half of the funding being invested in this project is almost entirely self-generated by the Q and well spent because it's going to prolong the life of this publicly owned building. The transformation of the Q will greatly benefit the city of Cleveland and help ensure more economic opportunities for residents. Simply put, the Q transformation is good for Cleveland, Fudge added. It would create more economic opportunities for its residents and tax revenues for neighborhood services. And I want to uh, personally thank the Congresswoman for joining in the effort to support this important project. Uh, there are many people that want to speak to you, many partners that have been involved in this, in this project. And I want to begin by uh, introducing uh, my friend and our county executive, Armin Budish, who uh, really worked to take care of the county's part of this and has been a tireless advocate for this project and understands the economic benefits of this project. Uh, so, uh, Ms. County Executive, if you'd please join us. Thank you. Well, I have my 45 minute speech ready, but you've all heard it already, probably more than you'd like, so I'm going to keep this very short. This deal is great for the people of Cuyahoga County. 
It's all about jobs, it's about economic development, it's about community development, and it's about generating the funds we need for social, human, and health care services in this county. That's what this deal is about, and I'm pleased, very pleased, that the city of Cleveland and Kevin Kelly have been able to even make the deal better by the three items he mentioned today. So this is a, this is a great deal. I'm pleased to be here, and I look forward to seeing the queue improve and the city and the county move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Armin, and thanks for your leadership at the county. Um, next, uh, our mayor is not available today, um, but he is fully supportive. But speaking for Mayor Frank Jackson, I would like to welcome the podium, Ken Silliman. Good afternoon. I have the following statement from Cleveland Mayor Frank T. Jackson. I am pleased to recognize the Cleveland Cavaliers' commitment to continue and expand their community benefits in the city of Cleveland if Ordinance 305-17 becomes effective this week. They have added to last year's work at Fairfax Recreation Center by now agreeing to refurbish basketball courts in every city recreation center. They have agreed to ensure, they have agreed to ensure in years 2024 through 2034 that the city's general fund will receive no less than an equal amount to the amount paid from admissions tax to the trustee for the Q transformation debt. And they have agreed to invest the proceeds of their playoff watch parties in a Habitat for Humanity home program throughout the city of Cleveland. Thank you. Um, at this point, I would like to um, welcome to the podium a good friend of mine, a great representative um, for this area in the state of Ohio, Senator Sandra Williams of District 21. Senator? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am here today to confirm my support for the Q deal and to also press upon council to continue to work toward improving and passing this deal. I've worked extremely hard over the last several years in Columbus trying to bring economic development dollars and workforce training dollars back to this region because that's what the citizens have asked us for. They've asked us for jobs and to grow our economy. And anybody who opposes a deal that would grow our economy is just foolish and unwise. And contrary, contrary to what some people would have you think, this deal is not about giving money to a millionaire. This deal is about investing in ourselves and investing in our region so that we can secure our future. So I'm calling on council to do what it needs to do, do what the citizens of this city have asked you to do, and bring jobs back to this region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. At this point, I would like to invite to the podium um, the, the people that are going to make the, um, the, the, the one of the critical components of this, of this new deal happen. Um, John Habit from Habitat for Humanity and uh, Len Komorowski from the Cleveland Cavs to describe the partnership and the homes that they are going to help uh, restore in our community. Thank you, Kevin. John, good to have you here. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming out for this very important series of announcements. And we are uh, truly excited about the efforts to continue to move forward with the Q Transformation Project, about its continued impact in the community in terms of its tax impact, in terms of its jobs. And as we're seeing playing out on the floor uh, yesterday uh, and continue to move forward to hopefully carry the name and image of Cleveland around the world nationally, internationally. So uh, we're ex really extremely excited about that. But also today to talk specifically on behalf of our owner, Dan Gilbert, our ownership team, and his overall umbrella entity as well, Rock Ventures, one of the major, major uh, uh, elements of Dan's passion in terms of both Detroit and Cleveland has been about blight eradication and also about rehabilitation. And those efforts have been ongoing and longstanding. Uh, Dan is also the co-chair of the Blight Commission in Detroit and has worked actively with our friends at the uh, Western Reserve Land Conservancy, which you'll hear from in a second, 
uh, about securing funds of which to the level of $272 million of hardest hit funds for the state of Ohio, of which 60 million of those have matriculated to the uh, Cuyahoga County, and a significant amount of those have already been deployed in the marketplace and the, in the ever going fight to uh, eradicate blight here in the city in Cuyahoga County. And that has been truly a passion of our organization. Again, a race, all the way to the top with Dan leading the charge. Uh, today, in terms of rehabilitation, uh, wanted to, to speak specifically about that. And as you know, we have our watch parties at the queue. Uh, last year, we had generated in excess of $750,000, where 100%, a 100% of those proceeds for those tickets go to charitable efforts and endeavors. And uh, consistent with Dan Rock Ventures' uh, ongoing commitments to blight and rehab rehabilitation, as well as with the Cavaliers, we're, we're excited and pleased to be able to state that all the proceeds for this year's watch parties will go to the to Habitat for Humanity. And I'm going to let uh, John speak to that in greater detail in terms of their initiative relative to the 100 homes in the next three years, as well as a portion of the proceeds for the next two years relative to our watch parties uh, to, to speak to that as well. Uh, you'll also hear from Reverend Matthews, uh, the Executive Director of United Pastors and Mission, who also are firmly committed towards efforts to eradicate blight and rehabilitation and uh, will also be supportive and augmentative of these efforts as well. But with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to John for, for comments as well. John? Good afternoon. Well, if I was going to summarize in four words how I feel today about this fantastic designation, it would be wow, overwhelming, and absolutely great. Now, I have a few more than four words for you today, uh, but that's what it means to us because this is the first for Cleveland Habitat for Humanity, and we really are proud and honored to be designated in this way. Our partnership uh, with the Quicken Loans family uh, really is a long-term partnership. Uh, last year, I would suggest they stepped up. I, I know the team stepped up, but also, 400 employees from Quicken Loans and its family uh, companies also stepped up. And they sponsored a four-day neighborhood spruce up in Buckeye. They worked on three streets, over 50 projects. They did new porches, new steps, debris removal, and really made a difference in that neighborhood. And I'll summarize in one comment what the residents said. Somebody finally paid attention to us. I think the Quicken Loans family were so impressed about what they could do that when they had a regional vice president uh, meeting in Cleveland a few weeks later, they wanted to do a habitat project. Fortunately or unfortunately, it rained all day. So we put them inside in the warehouse and they made several sheds used by habitat families today. Uh, this year they're scheduled again for September 12th to 15th in the Buckeye neighborhood and they're expecting 450 volunteers on three streets that need our help. Watch party proceeds will be dedicated to advancing our 100 home Cleveland neighborhood revitalization campaign. Home ownership and everything it means, its stability, safety, better educational and economic outcomes and health outcomes, and upward mobility for families. And by the way, a Habitat house is the best bargain in town. Fully rehabbed house, I say it's like having an upscale house rehabber come in and do the work, and I challenge you, come out and see them, you'll say the same thing. Our average family is paying $365 a month for mortgage, inter, uh, mortgage taxes, and principal, and that's a 15-year note. That makes a difference. And the day one they move in, if they commit to staying in that house, they have $20,000 equity in their pocket. It also means revitalize. It also means revitalized neighborhoods built upon proud homeowners investing in theirs and the city's future. And now I say and challenge you perhaps, why stop at 100 homes? Let's dream and imagine doing even more for deserving families wanting to commit to Cleveland's neighborhood revitalization and to their own future. I really can't thank the Cavs enough. And 
you can just imagine what this does for us and for the neighborhoods we're, in which we're working. But I also want to note that none of Habitat's work would be possible without the active participation and participation with the City of Cleveland. Together, we are doing it and making it happen in the City of Cleveland. Thank you. And, and one note in closing again, I just want to reiterate and thank our, our, our friends and our partners and part of Dan's family of companies with Rock Ventures from an umbrella end and their commitment to Habitat on a national level, not only in Detroit and also in Cleveland, really has helped to make this happen in terms of, again, continuing to double down on the fight against blight with rehabilitation and uh, how we can continue to further our community. So. Thank you very much, and uh, we appreciate all of your support in terms of furthering these causes as well. Thank you, Len. Thank you, John, and thanks for your commitment to thanks for your commitment to low-income housing in our neighborhood. I can usually do this. Next, I'd like to invite to uh, to the podium a gentleman who is known to all of us. Uh, he is the executive director of United Pastors and Mission who are supporting this project. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the Reverend C.J. Matthews. I'm, ex I'm extremely grateful today to join, to join with the Cleveland Cavaliers, Habitat for Humanity, the mayor's representative, our county exec, our state senator, and others, to say that as executive director of United Pastors and Mission, our organization supports the Q deal. But more than that, more than a decade ago when Mr. Gilbert came to town, he sat down with the pastors and we began a partnership at that time. And over the years, several things have been accomplished within that relationship. But when we talk about 100 homes, and Habitat for Humanity, that is significant. And to borrow from my tradition, I would like to say it like this. We often hear about Jesus feeding the 5,000, not understanding that there were so many more because the women and children weren't counted. So when we say 100 homes, that's significant because we're really talking about 100 families. And when we say 100 families, if there's two, three, four people that live in that home, then we multiply that by three or 400 citizens. So when we talk about the coalition that you see here today, the variety of groups and organizations that stand behind this deal, it is only what we can do if we really want to affect our neighborhoods. This is a neighborhood initiative, and therefore that's why United Pastors could only say yes and we support what you're doing. Now, as I step away from the podium in my official capacity, in my official comments, I just also want to say I'm a fan. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Matthews. Uh, next, uh, we've, we've talked about neighborhoods, we've talked about blight, about this, the 100 homes, but we really need to, this will not end the fight against blight. But an organization called Western Reserve Land Conservancy is fighting to end blight. And uh, for that, I would like to uh, jo ask to join us at the podium, uh, Rich Cochran. Thank you very much. Six or seven years ago, in the wake of the worst foreclosure crisis to ever hit our region, we were faced with over 10,000 vacant and abandoned homes that polluted our city's neighborhoods leading to more crime, leading to collapsing property values, leading to declining human health, thousands upon thousands of vacant and abandoned homes. And we went out into the market to try to see if we could raise literally hundreds of millions of dollars to help address this blight. Our number one partner in that effort was Dan Gilbert, Rock Ventures, and the Cavs. They were instrumental in helping us to raise more, th more, than, more than $2 billion nationally more than 400 million statewide, and nearly uh, over 100 million locally. Excuse me. Uh, this, this partnership was remarkable for many reasons, not the least of which was it was a public-private partnership, as so many of Dan Gilbert's partnerships are. 
Today we're working with the Cavs on the Trees for Threes program and the Reforest Our City program to reforest our city's neighborhoods. We've learned <laughs> that there can be no environmental, no, no human equality in the absence of environmental equality. The Cavs are partnering with us to reforest our city's neighborhoods so that our city will always be cleaner and greener. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rich. Um, next, I'd like to bring to the podium uh, somebody who knows and lives and breathes and her existence is to improve our neighborhoods and improve the quality of life in the city of Cleveland. Uh, that is Marcia Maccabee of the Urban League. Uh, Marcia, if you would join us, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Every day, the Urban League of Greater Cleveland's role is to make sure that we are empowering communities and changing lives. We are not new to this city or to this movement or to the needs of creating economic development and also empowerment and also making sure that we are, okay, making sure that we are also, it, you know, Mike has given us a fit here. Okay. Step back. Step back? Step back? Yeah, I think Is that good. good? Okay. Making sure that we are empowering communities and changing lives and creating opportunities every day. I was so excited to see the signs here today because that's my work each and every day in this community. I wear a pen that says, Jobs Rebuild America, and certainly if they rebuild America, they help rebuild Cleveland. So we are here in support of this uh, arrangement, and we are very much going to be looking to help on making sure that our individuals from our communities get a chance to work on these uh, projects and have representation as we continue to partner with the Cavaliers, the city, and the county in this uh, extraordinary effort and opportunity that we have for this time and this season. Thank you. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite to the podium, we're very, very, very pleased, very fortunate to have the support of the NAACP in this very important venture. And for that, I would like to invite to the microphone Danielle Sindor, of the, who's the Economic Development Committee Chair of the NAACP. Danielle? Good afternoon. So I'm here on behalf of the Economic Development Committee and the entire body of the NAACP to pledge our support for the transformation project. When a project of this magnitude came before us, we thought it was important to do some due diligence around how do we ensure that there is equity, there's inclusion and there's access for people of color, which is our mantra. And after having several conversations and doing our due diligence, we came to an agreement that this was a great project for the community. We know that the Cavs have a significant amount of economic impact, not just at the beginning of the construction project, but the dollars that will continue to be spent out of the queue on a regular basis. And so we were able to come up with some agreements around supplier diversity goals, around making sure that we have more inclusion in projects that happen in the queue, like the launch kitchen, in addition to entrepreneurship. We know that Rock Ventures as a corporation is committed to ensuring that people of color, minorities, women, underserved populations get access to entrepreneurship because we know that helps to create jobs. Someone that may have a blemished background may not be able to go in corporate America and find the same success, but there's nothing that stops them from creating their own business, which we know is an economic empowerment initiative. And so we are excited today to hear about the additional items that have been brought to the table that will be added to legislation. And we are proud to be a partner with the Cavs and look forward to continue to working with them on opportunities like this and other opportunities in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, next, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Michael Obey, who is the chairman of the board of the President's Council, and he'll speak to the uh, impact that this will have for, for his membership. Michael. Good afternoon, Cleveland. 
um, five, about 20 years ago, a group of five black business owners got together for a time like this. Uh, we advocate for wealth creation and economic development in African-American business community. Uh, today, we represent about 150 members, and we employ over 1,500 people, mostly African-American workers. We see this project as one that will help continue to push our mission towards wealth creation, job creation in the African-American community. We have met with the CAVS organization, the county, the city. They assured us there will be representation on this project. Our members helped craft the community benefit agreement, people like Lonnie Coleman. And they've assured us that this project will uh, utilize the CBA. So we are very proud to be part of this project. And we believe this is one of the CAVS and the Q, those two uh, two biggest, one of the biggest assets, economic assets that Cleveland has. The momentum is building, and we have to show our support to continue this vitality and the confidence that this city has really had in its steps. We have a little swagger now <laughs> because the championship is a good thing, and we hopefully will bring another championship to Cleveland again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Uh, next, I'd like to invite, to invite to the podium a friend of all of ours, a stranger to nobody, and that is uh, Dave Wondolowski of the Cleveland Building Trades and Construct Building Cleveland Building Construction Trades Council. Dave. Good afternoon. After, after this weekend, I, I think that we're uh, well on our way to see another Cavaliers championship here in Cleveland. No. Dan Gilbert has invested a lot of money in this town and in our neighborhoods. And I know that, that throughout this campaign, there's some, been some disparaging comments about Dan and his organization. But I'll tell you what, they're a world-class organization. And I'm proud to be affiliated with the Cavaliers and, and to partner with the Cavaliers. I want to talk, I want to talk for a moment about the, uh, I want to talk for a moment about what the building trades has been doing for the community in terms of pre-apprenticeship programs. We're working along with Cuyahoga Community College and with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District to give opportunities to people that live in the city of Cleveland and people that need jobs so that we can get them on the right track for careers in the construction industry where they can get fair wages and benefits and go to work and retire with a pension with dignity. Not only are we working with adults, and are we working with uh, high schoolers? Well, we're even trying to get uh, we're even trying to get little guys like this involved. <laughs> and when and when a young guy and when a young guy like this has a dream of being in construction, he should have that dream fulfilled. He should be able to go out there and work and earn a living. This is what this is all about. This is about our future. Go Cavs! Uh, thank you, Dave. Um, if there's one individual that I think we can all agree has been the biggest advocate to make sure that African American uh, contractors have access to the projects that are happening in this town and make sure that there is representation, there's diversity on job sites and travels to job sites and looks at numbers and counts when he gets there and make sure that nobody is uh, putting forth numbers that, that don't bear what's, what's really there. This gentleman goes to, whether it's a school site, whether it's a project, he goes, he counts people because he is committed to making sure that black contractors get a share of the prosperity that's happening in our town. So I'd like to uh, introduce and bring to the podium uh, Mr. Norm Edwards. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, good afternoon. Norm Edwards, I'm with the Black Contractors Group, Executive Director. We've been out here for 17 years pounding the pavement uh, for diversity and inclusion for black and minority contractors and tradespeople. Eight years ago, I met Dan Gilbert when he was doing the casino. A lot of people told Dan Gilbert not to sit down with me, but I sat down with him. We've had a relationship for eight years, had over 40 percent black and minority participation as contractors and tradesmen on every project that he has done in the city and Cuyahoga County. 
we we need more developers like him and more black people in the city and the county and more minorities would be able to feed their families. That's all we need to do is go to work. We need to go to work. We need jobs. Anna and Dan Gilbert brought us jobs. That's why we're standing up here. And we, you know what? We're going to continue to get the jobs because we back him. We back Dan Gilbert 100% and we're not going anywhere. This deal needs to go through. This is a deal for the community that the city and the county desperately needs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Norm. Uh, just, just an aside, the Cleveland Municipal School District is building a building a uh, new uh, building, a uh, K-8 in Ward 13, and I met with them the week before last, and I said, have you talked to Norm Edwards? Because I don't want any problems. And they, uh, they, they said that they would, uh, they would be in touch, because I don't want to uh, be on the wrong side of, uh, of that issue. So, uh, Norm, thanks for all your advocacy. Um, and it's not just the building trades and the, and, the, um, and the black contractors that are affected. The workers at the queue, the thousands of workers at the queue, they are represented as well. They are members of the union. They pay union dues. They're represented by the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. And uh, we have their business agent, Michael Lahane, that's here to give you some perspective of his members. So, Michael? Thank you. Thank you. That's going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael Lahane. I'm the business manager of the Stage Hands Union here, Local 27, here in Cleveland, Ohio. Our men and the women, I represent the men and women who work behind the scenes, who set up, operate, uh, and take down all the shows at the Q Arena, as well as everybody for the fan experience. On behalf of myself and my entire membership of Local 27, I'm here to express our continued support for the Q Transformation Project. Throughout the years, the Q has been a major employer of Local 27 members. Their aggressive approach to booking, booking shows provides numerous opportunities for work. These are good paying jobs with benefits that supports families that people have raised their families on throughout the city as well as the community. It's important that the queue remains competitive in order to attract the highest level of quality and entertainment. If not, these well-paying middle class jobs will not be moving to China, they won't be moving to Mexico, but they'll be going to Detroit, Columbus, or Pittsburgh to, in their updated arenas. The more events held at the queue translates into opportunities for everyone in this city. We want to maintain the must-play venue in the region. There's a saying that I, I, I firmly believe in, if you're not growing, you're dying. With this transformation, we will continue to grow for many, many years to come in the city of Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 